Hello guys and girls, welcome to So Interactive TV. This is the first episode in the modern C++ programming series that we will be taking over the next couple of weeks. Um, C++ is a programming language started by Jean Strostop. Um, this is him. It was back in 79 when he started working with C with classes. And uh, it wasn't until 1983 that it was officially known as C++. The standard came out later in, in 1999, in 1998 rather. And basically, it's, it's become a very popular language, mostly known for systems programming. And it's also regarded as a better C. Uh, it supports data abstraction, object-oriented programming, and generic programming. So... We will be talking about this. I will have links to these resources in the descriptions below. So make sure you check them out after watching this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to know when the next episodes are coming out during the course of these series. So we will start off with the uh, programming here. And basically how this is going to work, I will be literally talking about the elements of C++ on a need-to-know basis and that is I believe is a better way to learn a more fun way to learn rather than just being structured and dropping everything your way. Now to program C++ you basically need a some sort of an editor, a text editor will do fine but we prefer you have an IDE. Uh, there are several of them out there like Visual Studio, we have Cute Creator, we have Sea Lion, and the likes, you know. Um, but here, what what we're using is uh, a resource from REPL.IT, which uh, serves our purpose at this time. You also need a compiler. In our case, we're using a compiler called GCC version 4.63, which is just uh, has got experimental support for modern C++, and that will serve our needs for now. And later on in the series, we'll be transferring and working from Qt Creator. And uh, also at intervals in our program, I'll be using this uh, tool here, which is a compiler explorer, where on the left, you'll be able to type in your code. And on the right, you can see the assembly, the assembled, uh, the assembly language equivalent of that particular code and I'll be referring to this when I need to explain some concepts here and there. So let's get started. So here we have what we call the, this is the most basic C++ program. I mean, that can do something useful. In this case, all this program does is to print this text out to the console. And this is our console on the right. And I will explain how this works, so bear with me. So if we just look here, I can compile this program and you can see it says hello world. That's the text we have uh, right here. Now, this is not the smallest C++ program you can have. You can actually have something much smaller. And if I move on to this side here, I can show you, if I type something like int main, we get an error. So this tells us there's basically something wrong. So our goal of these tutorials is to avoid as many errors as possible. And when we need to see an error, I'll, we'll be bringing that out so you can also learn from the errors. So I'll do that and boom, it works. The error is gone and we have some information here. So just to explain what's happening on the over here is this is called a base pointer. These are basically your CPU registers. I won't go into detail about that, but we have a base pointer which basically when this program runs, when main runs, it saves what is in the base pointer and then moves what is in the stack pointer. Stack pointer is, is, a, is a pointer in the memory. It moves whatever information, whatever data is there into the base pointer. And then it moves zero into the accumulator register. And then restores what was in the base pointer and returns. So literally, that's not useful. 
And, but from this statement, we can see that every C++ program needs a function called main. This format here is called a function. A function consists of the proposed return type, the name of the function, uh, which has to have uh, those brackets. The brackets could be filled with information and then there's the body of the function which is in curly brackets. Now it is um, basically that's it and you will see in some functions there's a statement like this. Now that statement basically says return what is defined here. Sometimes it could be a double, it could be a float, it could be void. In the case of void, you do not return anything. So you want to leave that out. But basically, this is a correct function. I mean, leaving that out will still work, but this is correct. As you can see, I have added it and nothing has changed on the right. It's exactly the same code. If I keep your eye here, if I delete that, we still get the same piece of code, nothing changes. So the other thing you need to know about C++ is C++ does not process white spaces like these, neither does it bother about comments. So this, what I've highlighted here, this is a one line comment, it's which starts with two slashes or a comment over several lines which start with a slash and a star and end in a star slash. Anything between that is not processed. Anything on this line here is not processed as well. So C++ doesn't really care about this. And just to illustrate that using our compiler explorer, if we, if we put this piece of text here, you can see the code doesn't change at all. So this is totally irrelevant. And we can run our C++ without that, but it's good for comments because as programs get bigger, you need to keep track of things, why you did something, what a function does, <coughs> excuse me. And that is what comments are for. It's just for the human beings. So I will remove that just to make things look cleaner. And now we have, basically you can see this is a simple C++ function that simply prints out hello world to the, to the console. So we, to do that, we start with this line here, which says hashtag include. That's not a social media hashtag. It's a, called a preprocessor directive. This tells the compiler that to, before compiling, there's something that needs to be done here. Mostly it's expanding. And in this case, we are including the contents of a library or external file that's within these uh, angled brackets. Now, these angled brackets, we're including the contents of IOStream. IOStream has got uh, code and definitions that allow you to print stuff to your computer screen in this case. And it's all defined there so that we don't need to define it every time we write a C++ program. And that's what libraries are there for. Because C++ consists of a large library called the standard template library. There are other libraries out there called Qt library. There's the boost library. And we will be looking at those uh, when we get to them. So um, this here, Cout, which is pronounced Cout, is what you, you take the, the text you type here, put it into C out, and the C out actually prints that uh, to the screen. Now, this stood here, and the, the two, the double colons, that is basically sig signifying the namespace C out belongs to. Now, if I could explain C out, it's something like um, if you have two gentlemen one called Robert Matthews and the other guy called Robert Stevens. If I say, Robert, I, I go into the P and say, Robert, come to my office. Which of these two guys am I referring to? 
And uh, so you need to define and say, Robert Stevens, come to my office. And that is the same thing here. This, so this could be regarded as the surname in layman's terms, and then this could be the first name. Now, um, so the stud is the surname, Siout is the first name. Now, there are cases where um, you're in a family setting, you're at home. So you have, again, Robert, and he has two siblings, Mary and Jen. So if I say Robert, obviously everybody knows which Robert it is, because in that family, you don't expect two siblings to have the same name, at least. But um, so in C++, we can do something like that by declaring the namespace. And we simply do it by typing this. We say using namespace. And the namespace is std. And once we do that, we no longer need to use that. So if we compile this program, we'll see it still shows the same thing. No errors. But look at this. Um, let, let me create another variable here to illustrate so that you can see the kind of errors we can be getting. So I can say int uh, namespace variable and I'll give it a value of 10. Now this statement here is the way you define variables in modern C++. The old way I would simply say um, int x is equal to 10. Uh, that would be the old way. This is acceptable. Um, so we will go with uh, using uh, this syntax. So I can say int syntax there, then uh, let's print it out, ns. And then we can say std and l there. Now we compile hello world 10. So 10, the value 10 up there. Now what is this? This is basically similar to that. It just says we're well, at the end of the line, it flushes memory and blah, blah, blah. But this does so much more work. It's less efficient than this. But in, in this sort of program, it doesn't really matter because it's a very small program, so it's not an issue. But uh, when performance and memory you want to squeeze out every ounce of juice from a system, then you'd probably want to do something like this. And, uh, oops, okay, remove those, and then uh, type that. That still works. So here, if I say, um, we'll leave it like that, and then here we'll come and say something like uh, namespace, we'll call it GS, and then uh, wrap this in the namespace. When we compile, look what happens. We get an error. Um, on line, it, it complains about line 11. On line 11, character 13, that's there, was declared, was not declared in this scope. So it cannot find NS. But um, it's clever enough to discover because when the same fly, file, it knows that NS is a member of the GS namespace. So here, to get the same one, I would go and type in GS that, and then it no longer gives an error. So I have to specify the namespace. But again, if I don't want to specify the namespace, I simply come in and type using namespace uh, GS. If I remove that and then run the program, we don't get an error. And so you can see this namespace stood somewhere in this file is a namespace stood that has been defined and all these um, members and functions and all that have been declared in there. 
So basically there you have it. This is literally um, the start of our C++ programming. And like I showed you before, we can simply return zero back to the compiler. Um, in this case, returning zero is simply telling the caller, in this case, which is the operating system, that uh, nothing went wrong. We did not get any errors. Um, but a non, if we return a non zero back to the operating system, it says the program executed with an error and uh, that's something that needs to be debugged or looked into. So there you have it. Uh, that's enough for this episode in this series. You have now, we have now gotten to write our first C++ uh, program. Next, we will be looking at uh, the fundamental data types that come with C++ because we literally beyond this point, we cannot move without uh, looking at the those data types. We have used one right here, which is int, and that's short for integer. And uh, there are more data types, and we'll be having a deeper look into that in the next series before we look at some of the exciting things you can do with the language. So thank you, and uh, make sure you subscribe, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.